Hi everyone, so I hope you don't mind the sunshine. So I'm leaving the sunshine in. So I'm going to show you today um, this card, which is an octagonal pinwheel card. I've previously shown you the square version, which is that one, and the hexagonal version, which is that one. And so, um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to now show you the octagonal one. So as I've said before, the square one fits in an envelope for a 6x6, and then the hexagonal and the octagonal fit into an envelope for a 5x7 card. So on today's um, on today's uh, card, I've actually used a crafter's companion pad called The Beginnings of Spring, I think it is called. It's this one here, The Beginning of Spring. Lots of sunshine on it, and it's absolutely beautiful, this pad. It's got loads, all the papers are pearlized, and they're all like teals and pinks and lilacs, and they're beautiful. And then I've also used these little die-cut shapes that I actually got from China a while ago haven't been able to use them until now but they go really well with these papers so I've just stuck them down with a bit of silicon glue so they're not they're raised up a little bit but they're not raised up so much that you can't fold it flat so yeah so the whole thing folds flat like that now mine's not that flat because of the the chunk I've used because I've, I've used quite thick mat I've used quite reasonably thick pattern and you've got all the layers from the toppers so just bear that in mind when you're choosing your papers and you're choosing your patterns just bear that in mind so today i'm actually going to be using an old dovecraft pad which was called bluebirds and roses apologies again for the sunshine if it's getting in the way hopefully it's not uh, it usually looks worse on the camera when i come to edit it doesn't look as bad but yeah this was bluebirds and roses this is dewcraft paper mania this was from a good three years ago Okay, so in the previous video where I did a hexagonal one, I actually, you know, stepped away from just having a rectangular panel. But on this one, I'm going back to the rectangular again. Because it's octagonal, I feel like you need just, you know, I'm just going to go with the basic. But you can round your corners, you can do border punches, you can do what you want. So, for the base card, you're going to need eight pieces that are three and a half by five. Now, where before, for the hexagonal and also for the square we've actually scored one inch in. But for this one, we're gonna do it slightly different. So for this one, we're actually gonna score half an inch on all of them. So on the short side, on the three and a half inch side, you're gonna score at half an inch in. So once you've done that, you're just gonna go ahead and fold and burnish all of your score lines. Okay, so next you're going to take one of your panels and you're going to turn it over so it's a valley fold. Take another one of your panels and on the, the mountain side of the flap, you're going to, on the tab, you're going to put some wet glue or some, so some kind of strong wet glue or you can use red tape, whatever you get on best with. And so you're going to take your tab, you're going to turn it over, so this is the gluey side here. And this cut edge here needs to line up with your score line. And it needs to go right into that bit there and line up against the bump. So when you score, you've got like a bump, haven't you? Um, so you want to make sure it goes right against that bump. You don't want to go over it and you also don't want to go too far off. It just needs to sort of line it up there. I'm hoping you can see this okay with the sunshine. Okay, so then we're going to take the next one and again, take some glue or red tape. Add it onto the mountain side of the tab. Turn it over, flatten your card down, and you've got one tab where the second tab is. So you're, I'm always sticking it on the right hand side. This is going to go again lined up with that right hand score line. So you're going to go ahead and stick that down. So that's what it looks like from the top because that's your first piece, that's your second piece, there's your third piece. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do the next one. Again, put your glue on the top of the mountain side piece. And then turn it over and you've now got three tabs and then you've got a big panel so where the big panel is that's where you're sticking your your next tab your fourth tab and you're lining up that cut edge again against the score line and then when you sit it up again you've got that so you've got the start of your pinwheel so i'm going to go ahead now i'm going to speed it up but i'm not going to speed it up by lots just so that you if you're still a bit confused you can see what i'm doing so i'm going to go ahead now and finish these other four off
okay so once you've stuck all eight pieces down it should look like that so now what you want to do is you want to fold two of them in in fact no th no yeah two of them no three of them no yeah three of them so you've got one two and three so on that crease line there you want to fold that over like that so you've got one two three and then this tab here you want to put some glue on and then you're just going to fold this one piece here over and stick it on um, if you want to do it a different way you can i just find this is the easiest way to kind of not get in a muddle so we're going to add some glue and then we're going to fold that over and stick that down and that will complete our pinwheel and mean that when we stand it up there you have your octagon okay so you can see the octagon starts to really take shape now give it a little bit of a, a, a tease to get it all nicely opened up but there's your octagon so now we're going to decorate so for your big pieces that go on these bigger panels here, you're going to need eight matte pit panels that are two and three quarters by four and three quarters. Then you're going to need seven pattern panels that are two and a half by four and a half and one white panel that's two and a half by four and a half. So these are just going to go on all of these big sections. I'm going to go ahead and stick these down. Okay, so you should end up with that, hopefully. So then we're just going to decorate the reverse. Now, again, if you want to leave this reverse bit, you can. I'm going to do it this time around. I didn't do it with the hexagonal on my the one I did in the, in the um, video, uh, but I did do it on the previous hexagonal. But I feel like it needs something on this. So I'm going to. So you need for this eight mat pieces that are two and a quarter by four and three quarter, and eight pattern pieces that are two inches by four and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and cut and stick these on. Okay, so that's what you end up with. Now, some of my panels are still wet, so I need to be careful they don't drop off. Um, but yeah, it's quite nice. So what we need to do now is go ahead and add our greeting on. Now, one thing you need to remember is that wherever your back is, so there's my back. If you look on top, that's my back panel. So this is my front panel here. You could class this as your front panel if you want, because both of them are sort of, you know, so either of those two is fine for your front panel. So I'm going to go ahead now and add a greeting. Okay, so I went ahead and added a um, greeting on it. This is from the die cut pack. There's also an A4 alternate die cut pack that comes with it. Um, I'm not sure if they're still available online, but if they are, I'll add a link. So I'm going to go and add, just add a few little gems onto, onto each of the sides, just because I really don't want to be, I don't want to be adding too much else on it. Um, I might add some butterflies possibly later, but for now I just want to be adding a few, just a little bit of something. So in case you're wondering which gems I was using, there were these Anita's gems and they're the smallest ones and they're literally like, I don't know, they're about three mils, I think they might be, possibly three, it doesn't say, three mils I think they are, but they come in a whole range of different colours, but they're quite useful for things like this where you want a little bit of bling, but you don't want to take up too much space in the envelope. So there you go, so there's the first one that I made, my sample card, um, yeah, and there's the second one, so I haven't gone ahead and decorated it massively, I've just done that first bit where you've got the greeting and then a few little gems. Um, I think once that's dry, I might add some more gems on, I might add some butterflies, not sure. And then obviously you've got space on the back to write. But yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed these. Uh, go and check out the other two videos, the one for the square one and the one for the hexagonal one. So I've got, I've literally got a ton load of, um, of uh, pinwheel cards now. I've got two of the square, two hexagonals and two octagonals. So yeah, um, but I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, hit the notification bell so you never miss a video, and I will see you next time. Bye!